Hey, and welcome to Pints with Aquinas. I hope you're all doing well. Um, let me know if you can hear me in the chat, okay? I've been doing a bit of uh, messing around here with the microphones. And uh, just want to make sure it's all working fine. It looks like it is. So tomorrow, we, uh, of course, are entering Lent. If you are one of our Eastern Catholics or Orthodox brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, the Great Fast has already begun. But I'm really glad you're here. I wanted to share with you a prayer that I mentioned in the last live stream. And it is the prayer of uh, St. Ephraim. And it's something that I started doing when I attended a Byzantine church in uh, Atlanta. And uh, it's something very simple that you can do, but it's a great way to start the day. I don't know if you're like me, but unfortunately, sometimes I fall into the habit uh, of uh, you know, waking up and the first thing I do is I, I check my phone. And uh, I don't think that's a good thing, you know? I think the first thing I wanna do is offer my, offer my prayers to, to the Lord, offer my first thoughts to the Lord. And so this, this will really help you uh, in, that, in, in that regard, especially during Lent. And this is a prayer that is prayed in the East during Lent. So I wanted to just sort of show you the prayer, see what you think about it, and teach you how to do it. It's very simple, but you know, sometimes it's, it, it's, it's nice to be taught these things, you know? Um, so let me let me let me show you what it looks like here. So this is the prayer. Um, I'll go over it right now, and then uh, I'll put this text below. And if you want, you can you can check it out. Um, maybe write it down or memorize it so that you can pray it yourself. All right. So when I wake up in the morning, um, two things I would suggest doing for this Lent. One would be to get a crucifix and to put it by your bed. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, maybe have the first thing that you do, kiss that crucifix. And then you could pray this prayer, all right? So I, I would stand and I would just say, I'd make the sign of the cross three times. And I would say, oh God be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh God be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh God be merciful to me, a sinner. And then I would enter the prayer. And it goes like this, right? O Lord and Master of my life, grant that I may not be afflicted with the spirit of sloth, acquisitiveness, ambition, and vain talking. All right, and at this point, you're gonna make a prostration. And what's a, prost a prostration? Well, I guess maybe it's pretty self-explanatory, but you're going to kneel, and then as you're kneeling, touch your forehead to the floor, and then stand up and make the sign of the cross. This is really great if you're out of shape as well. It's a great way to kind of wake up in the morning. And then after you've done a prostration, you stand up and say, instead bestow upon me your servant, the spirit of purity, humility, patience, and love. And then another prostration, all right? So you go to your knees, bow your head to the floor, touch the floor. Uh, I'm laughing because a couple of lengths ago we were doing this and my daughter smacked herself in the eye uh, somehow, I don't know, or she headbutted the floor too hard or something. And I thought the perils of Eastern prayer, right? But anyway, um, all right, so you do that. That's the second prostration. And then you say, yes, O Lord and King, grant me the grace to see my own sins and not to judge my brethren. And then you make your third prostration. For you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. And then you say, O God, be gracious to me, the sinner, and have mercy on me. And you do this 12 times. O oh God, be gracious to me, the sinner, and have mercy on me. And during this, these, these 12 prayers, you don't want to make a full prostration. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but you could make a metony, which is a, a bow from the hips, and you touch your fingertips to the floor, and then you stand up and you make the sign of the cross. And so you do this 12 times. It's quite intense, actually. Oh God, be, I won't do the whole thing, but oh God, be gracious to me, the sinner, and have mercy on me. You go all the way down, right? Not knees and then head to the floor but fingertips to the floor oh god be gracious to me the sinner and have mercy on me you say that 12 times and then you say yes O lord and king grant me the grace to see my own sins and not to judge my brethren final prostration get up and then you say for you are blessed forever and ever amen that's it i mean it's a simple prayer but it is so powerful check out these 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 uh these words Grant that I may not be afflicted with a spirit of sloth, acquisitiveness, right? Acquisitiveness is this, uh, this desire for material goods, right? Or, or money in, a, in an inordinate sort of way. Ambition. Like, I want to be freed from the spirit of ambition and vain talking. 
I remember Jason Everett a while ago talking about the importance of maybe just giving, you want to fast, maybe fast from, fast from words. Um, let's see if I can make this look a little cooler here. All right. Um, and then that, that's the prostration, right? And I've written it down here and I put that below for you. Instead, instead, like rather than these things, here's what I want. I want purity. I want humility. I want patience and love. And I love this line here. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me the grace to see my own sin and not to judge my brethren. You know, this this is uh, this is something that um, is it's it's so easy to see our to see our sins, uh, to see other people's sins and not our own sins. And this happened to me recently. Um, I woke up. I, I, the kids let us sleep in, but when we woke up, it was about nine a.m. We had overslept, and the kids were fighting downstairs. And you know, uh, it really wasn't pleasant. And just trying to say to them, like, what what did you what did you do? And what do they say? Well, they don't say what they did. They say what their sibling said or what their sibling did. And you say, okay, that's okay. Granted, I understand that. But what did you do? And I tell you what, it's a very difficult thing. Unless we think we're a lot greater than children, I think very often we're exactly the same. We have a whole litany of excuses for our bad behavior, but we chalk up our good behavior to ourselves. I was thinking this the other day when... I got a little stressed out with my daughter. I was taking her sledding and something happened. And um, I was sitting down at night. We were about to pray the rosary. And I thought I should apologize to her. And I really didn't want to. It hurt. You know, sometimes it just, you're like, I'm, so, I'm always saying sorry. <laughs> well, I am. Maybe you don't have to. But I feel like I'm always saying sorry. And I thought to myself, I should be as excited to apologize as I would be to brag about something I just did. Whether that be on YouTube or to a friend, like some good thing that, that was kind of that was brought about through my efforts or through something else, you know, I thought that's, I mean, it's very difficult and it's probably unnatural in a sense to be excited to apologize. But I feel like, you know, as Christians, like our life is meant to be a life of repentance. And so I just kind of swallowed my pride, you know, well, here I look, it's funny, here I am bragging, right? I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm bragging to you right now about what a great person I am uh, in apologizing to my daughter. This is easy, right? This is what I'm talking about. But at the time, saying sorry to her was like really difficult. But I thought, God, wouldn't it be a beautiful grace if I could be as excited and as uh, ready to apologize for my bad behavior as I am to sort of say, hey, look at this thing that I did, you know, like I'm doing now. So, um, yeah, so that I was, please forgive me. I shouldn't have done that, you know, but 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 this is so true. Grant me the grace to see my own sins and not to judge my brethren. For you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. So again, this is called the prayer of St. Ephraim. There are different variations of it, but you can uh, you can look it up yourself or else I'll put the text below. You know, and another thing you could possibly do is um, you could, if you love to pray the rosary daily, you could maybe wake up in the morning, kiss the crucifix, and then just drop to your knees and pray an Our Father, sorry, the creed, the Our Father, three Hail Marys, and the Glory Be. And just kind of begin the kind of opening of your rosary that day and then, you know, begin the first decade at some point during the day. I don't know, man. I just think this is this is a great way to kind of... It is simple, you know what I mean? It's not too laborious. Like I'm, you know, I'm sure we have people much holier than, than me watching this and they're like, dude, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I meditate for an hour. Cool. I, th please pray for me. But I'm not there. I'm not there. I wake up and I'm exhausted and I just think about coffee and what text messages I received that night. You know, my family's in Australia, so usually I get text messages and different things. So um, this is a cool, cool thing, I think. Just going to give your first thoughts to the Lord. Anyway, so I hope that's a help. All right, so we do have a, a few people in the chat here who are asking questions. So let me throw them up here. Based Byzantine says, hype for the Yabara versus Father Patrick debate. Yeah, I am really excited about this as well. Uh, this is going to be uh, this coming Saturday. We have an Orthodox Catholic debate uh, and uh, Yabara and Father Patrick will be debating uh, whether the, the papacy, right, uh, and specifically, I think, infallibility as it's understood by the First Vatican Council dates back to the patristics. Uh, so this this is going to be really, uh, I think, an excellent uh, debate. So I, I hope that you can uh, hope you can join. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed, you might want to do that. That way you'll be notified when it, we, we're going to do it live. So I love doing things live, you know, because it's like here we go, no editing. Uh, we have another super chat here from Reese Spears. He says, "I hope you have a great Lent, Lent Matt. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Um, I'm 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 really 
I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As I said, I'm uh, going to give up alcohol this Lent. I think part of the reasons I'm saying that is because uh, I'll stick to it because of my pride. Isn't that great? I'm using my pride to do something that I have to do, you know, which is to go alcohol. And my friend, uh, well, I, maybe I won't rat him out here, but he, he lives in Steubenville. And we're going to be getting together with our wives tonight. We're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a drink, and, uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll begin the fast. And so I'm really looking forward to it, man. I hope you guys have a really beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, Lent. All right, why don't we go through some of these questions? If you're in the live stream now and you want to, you know, throw up a question, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, God nod. It's always lovely to see you, by the way. You have a lovely channel, and those who are watching, if you're looking for a lovely, intelligent young woman who has an excellent YouTube channel. Uh, discussing all things Catholic, go, go check out Godnod. She says, thought of you this past weekend, we had our annual Aquinas conference on campus. It was awesome. I got to befriend Dr. Andrew Swafford. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a, he's such a good guy. Uh, I love Dr. Swafford. Um, beautiful. Uh, Cody says, I'm doing Exodus 90s Lent. What are your thoughts on that? So my understanding is that Exodus 90 has a sort of Ah, uh, I won't say easier, but a less rigorous Lenten routine. So if you've done Exodus 90 in the past and here comes Lent and you want to know, you know, how I want to do, I want to sacrifice, but I don't want to do the whole Exodus 90 thing. Yeah, I mean, I got a friend who's doing it and uh, I, I'm a big fan of everything they do, obviously. So, so go, go, go check that out. They've got an app um, you could download and yeah, I know some friends who are doing it and they speak very highly of it. Um, Matthew... Uh, Arnick says, Matt, are you a fan of Dante? Yes, I am. I actually uh, wrote a paper on Dante and, and was awarded a prize at one point. It was like this copper Dante, not a bust, but it was like a, it was like a coin with Dante's image engraved in it. Uh, I wrote an article, it's probably out there somewhere, what Dante can teach us about overcoming pornography or something. But yeah, I love Dante. The Inferno is definitely the best part, I think. It's the most exciting for sure. Um, let's see. Damien says, do you think a person should abstain from public social appearances and involvement during Lent? Nah, but maybe I don't understand the question. So there you go. Uh, Devin wants to know what the prayer is that we're talking about. Fair enough. I understand that you just joined. If you want to go back to the start of the stream, I explain it to you. And once this live stream is over, I will put the text to the prayer in the description below. And so you can see it that way. Uh, Elijah wants to know how an Orthodox can become Catholic. Uh, just maybe contact your local parish. Uh, maybe this is a great question. Ho hopefully you're in the live chat next week and you can ask your Yabara about that. Um, he belongs to a, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he often helps out with a YouTube channel called Reason of Theology. And um, Michael Lofton is, is a convert from, from Orthodoxy. So you might want to go over there and check, check that out as well. Um, Sammy says, I, I love the studio, just perfect. That's very kind of you. Uh, Reese Spear says, have you ever been to Scotland? No, nah, I haven't. I lived in Ireland for three years, but I have never been to Scotland. So uh, one of these days. This uh, lovely lady, whose name I won't try to pronounce, says, just wanted you to know my family and I came into the Catholic Church a few weeks ago from Anglicanism. And your work was a significant part of our journey. Glory to Jesus Christ. See, this is what I'm talking about. I like reading stuff like that. That makes me feel good. It makes me look good. I don't like telling you that I was super stressed out around my daughter yesterday and was a jerk to my kids because I was stressed out. I don't like telling you that. But that's glory to God, man. That's, that's really beautiful. I'm, I'm so happy to hear it. Welcome. Welcome to the church. Um, Magdalene says, any advice for a mum of a three-month-old baby and a three-year-old toddler on how to have a fruitful land? Oh, man. Just just be patient with yourself and love your children. And, uh, yeah, I, I honestly, like, you, you, I'm sure you're a beautiful mum and you've got two beautiful kids and it's very difficult, you know, having a three-month-old and a toddler. Sometimes a toddler is a lot more difficult because they're up and running around and getting into things. And so I would say just kind of go easy on yourself and... Uh, you know, I mean, may, maybe you want to give up those things that are sort of interfering with you being the best mum you can. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know you, and I, you know, so I feel bad maybe even suggesting things. But you know, like let's suppose that 
you're super into social media, whatever that might be, you know, Twitter or Instagram or something. And, and you sometimes realize, okay, sometimes my daughter wants my attention and I'm, and I'm on the phone and, and that gets me frustrated with her, right? Because I'm just trying to have this one moment alone and I can't. And I think it's totally understandable to want some time alone sometimes, right? Absolutely. But, you know, that could be an idea. It's like, okay, so maybe I could shut off Instagram for the for Lent and that's it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm just going to try and be a good mum to my, to my girls because... Yeah, it's, it can be difficult. I'm sure, God love you. You're doing a beautiful job, I have no doubt. Um, lovely, 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 lovely. Man. Oh, funny. Julio Cesar asks, uh, what does Aquinas say about knowing the external world exists? He doesn't say a great deal. Uh, this is a rather modern, quote unquote, problem in philosophy probably began with Descartes, uh, who, who came up with a sort of way of trying to figure out what he can actually know for certain. Yeah, he, he realized that sometimes his mental faculties would deceive him. He would think one thing and then realize it was not the case. And so he thought, well, anything that can be doubted, I'm just going to say, I'm going to leave that off the table and see, is there something that I cannot doubt? And of course, he came up with his famous cogito, cogito ergo sum. Uh, well, I think, therefore, I have to be because somebody has to be doing the thinking. All right? You have David Hume who comes along shortly after denying uh, causation and in a way even denying the self. Uh, Kant, Immanuel Kant, tries to respond to this by saying, well, uh, you know, we, we know causation because it's something we experience in our minds, but we don't actually have any sort of... Uh, uh, we, we can't actually know things as they are. We can only know things as they appear to be. And it would seem to me that we're kind of increasingly becoming insane. Uh, so Aquinas isn't terribly worried about that. He understands that uh, we can know the external world. And so didn't spend a great deal of time uh, worrying about it. So I'm not sure you're going to find much in Aquinas. Uh, if you'd like your brains unscrambled, you might want to go and read some Plato. Plato, go, go read some of the dialogues. Um, maybe some Aristotle, and uh, maybe get get back into Aquinas after that. But it is funny because I actually went through a period in high school where I I actually doubted the existence of my friends. Um, this is a view I didn't know it at the time called solipsism. Solipsism is the idea that I'm the only person who exists, and I remember distinctly being in my bedroom and. Um, opening up the door and looking outside, closing the door and then opening it up really quickly to see if I could catch the world outside my room not existing. And I even went through a period where I thought, you know, I think my friends are real, but I can't be certain. You know, when I go home, they're, they're, they're no longer in my field of sense. You know, I, so how do I know that they're out there somewhere doing something? Maybe they're not. Maybe they're sort of like um, sophisticated cy cyborgs or robots. You know, they, they appear to have, um, you know, human-like consciousness, but I, I, I can't see their mind. So how do I know that they're having the same sort of inner experiences that I am? I remember sitting with a friend of mine, Gareth, his name was and uh, is, and saying to him, like, I actually, I'm afraid you don't exist. And he said, well, Matt, I promise I, I do exist. And I said, well, you know, that you would say that, you know, and... It's kind of difficult to argue with somebody who's who's dealing with that with solipsism, you know. And you know, here's an interesting here's an interesting uh, kind of analogy. Um, Dr. William Lane Craig and uh, Alvin Plantinga also speak speaks of it. This idea of properly basic beliefs, that is to say, beliefs that aren't based upon other beliefs, but beliefs that sort of make up the the sort of bedrock of our beliefs. It's sort of like um. Like, I don't know that John Paul II was right-handed a, from a properly basic belief, perhaps, but you could maybe show me a photo of it and I come to believe it based on that. But properly basic beliefs are beliefs that aren't based upon anything. They just sort of, they just are. And, um, you know, when you think about it, the existence of other minds is, is like that. I don't believe that you exist because I've come up with a syllogism. I just do. And to your point here about the external world, I interact with the world as if it exists. And, uh, you know, unless you can give me an argument that we're in the matrix, I'm going to go on believing it, right? But think about this for a second, because I think that, you know, I'm sure somewhere out there on the web, you could 
find a community of solipsists, which is a contradiction in terms and really funny. Um, I'm sure you could find people like this and you could probably find debates online about solipsism, right? And if you got deep into the weeds, you could probably come to ruin your friendships and even ruin your marriage, right? Like if you go down that path and start to question whether other people exist, um, that's gonna interfere with your marriage, it's gonna interfere with your friendships, it's gonna interfere with your business. And likewise, God is a properly basic belief. You know, some of us have experienced God and it just seems obvious to us that he exists, even if we're not really sure how to explain that to another person. But the analogy is if you get into the weeds and different debates on God's existence and things like this, you know, just like debates on solipsism could interfere with your relationship with people you love, uh, getting into the weeds regarding debates about God's existence can interfere with your relationship with God. And so, of course, the Catholic Church is a champion of faith and reason. The Church teaches that one can know God exists apart from the Bible, apart from any revelation given to us from God based on nature. Yeah. Uh, so the Church isn't anti-science or anti-reason in any sense. Um, but I think it's still the case that it, you can get so into philosophical back and forths about God's existence that it actually in, ends up interfering with your relationship with God. Like, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you, you know, spoke from the heart to him or sang hymns to him or something like that? So I'm not sure what you think about that, but I find that really interesting. By the way, uh, later on today, I'm going to have my wife do a live stream. Uh, many of you know Cameron Frad. She's super cool. She runs a podcast called Among the Lilies for Women. And um, we're going to do a live stream on her channel. So check that out. It's been a couple of hours. I'll put a link in the description below. All right. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's see some more questions here from folks. Uh, Nikita M. Uh, lovely to see you, Nikita. I'm not sure if you're the Nikita I know or not but uh, you might be a different one. I suppose there's a lot of people called Nikita. Hey Matt, this might sound very random, but I just wanted to tell you that I absolutely love the Hail Mary song that you had composed. I usually sing it. Oh, that's lovely to Mama Mary as I'm praying at a grotto. Glory to God, that's lovely. Thanks so much. Hmm. Let's see. Charles Wooler says, Hey Matt, when are you coming to Idaho? I know a lot of guys out here would love to hear you speak. I'm doing less traveling these days just because, you know, I've got a YouTube schedule to keep up with. I do enjoy traveling and speaking and meeting people. I was just in Texas. I gave 12 talks in five days. I very much enjoy it, uh, you know. But, um, you know, I'm certainly open to coming, but uh, I, I travel less than I used to. Uh, Elijah Holberg says, Matt, what do you think about the Eastern Chotki? Oh, I was about to pull out my chotki to impress all of you, but I have a rosary, so that's not a chotki. Uh, a chotki is a Russian word for not, and you know, many of you have heard me speak about it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Big fan. Big fan of praying the Jesus prayer. Um, I mean, Reese says, Hi, Matt. What are your thoughts on bodybuilding? I don't know. I don't have, ter I don't have many thoughts on bodybuilding. Uh, I would think that Obviously, treating your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit, taking care of it, is a good thing. Uh, I suppose, like many things, you can overdo it. Um, but I'm sure you could also be a bodybuilder for the glory of God. What do I know? So I don't want to speak about that uh, too much. Sammy says, <laughs> We will ever, or will we ever, get another three-hour Trent Horn interview? Well, first of all, I'll have you know that it was almost four hours. It was three hours and 58 minutes. If you haven't seen my three hour and 58 minute interview with Trent Horn, go check that out because uh, that was that was quite the episode. Yeah, I think we'll have him in again. In a couple of weeks from now, we're gonna interview Scott Hahn here in the studio. So that'll be cool, look forward to that. Uh, Luis says, what steps do I have to take if I was baptized Catholic when I was a baby but didn't go through first holy communion or confirmation? Yeah, so you would just go and speak to your local priest and. Tell him that, that you are a Catholic, but you've, ne excuse me, you've never received Eucharist or confirmation. And he will, please God, look at remedying that. So, my friends, um, yeah, okay. Um, this has been a pleasure. 
uh, I will let you go. But as I say, I'll put that uh, link in the description below um, to this prayer that you might choose to pray for Lent. And it would be lovely to hear from you in the YouTube below, in the YouTube comment section, what prayers you might be praying uh, as you wake up in the morning. I do think it is good to kind of give your first thoughts to our Lord like that. And maybe you have a suggestion and people could benefit in the YouTube channel. Uh, below. So let us know. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I do pray that you have a lovely Lent. Uh, God bless you all.